Hi everyone, I hope everybody's doing well today. Today we have a full moon in Capricorn, also known as a super moon, also known as the buck moon. It is the biggest, most energetically charged full moon of the entire year. Um, so you're going to be feeling a lot of energy shifts with this moon. And it's not just astrology, guys. It's science, okay? If a full moon can control the waves of the ocean, and we know that the supermoon will really control the waves and the tides of the ocean, right? Because of its energetic charge. We are 70% water, right? So it does something to our body also, physically it's 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 an energetic process so you might be feeling a little wobbly right off balance a little bit we'll talk about the energy a little bit though i have in my other readings if you're new to my channel welcome all my readings are timeless you know but i do want to point out full moons are about completions completing cycles okay when it comes to visualizations rituals manifesting whatever you do to manifest whether it's through meditation and visualization if it's manifesting you know by writing down what you want making a vision board there's so many methods if it's through using the water technique where you know you pour yourself a glass of water and you speak into it and then you drink it to energetically charge it. Charging the water underneath the moonlight. There's so many different ways. Basically, I do want you to know, interestingly enough, if we're going to talk about manifesting in rituals very quickly. The reason why a lot of people get confused and label these things woo-woo is because they get overwhelmed by how many techniques there are for the same thing and this is what i have to say about that and interesting it ties into religion it ties into spell work yeah you name you, you guessed it witchcraft right it's all I'm not going to say that witchcraft and religion and all this, I'm not going to get, that's a whole nother conversation, but it, it is all tied together. Because at the end of the day, we all live on, we share one planet, right? And we share the same energetic laws. Okay, so, <laughs> so whatever's being done on this planet, we're not separate, has something to, everything's connected, okay? Um, what you do with the dark and light energy has to do with you, honey. But this is the thing about what manifestation in order to manifest something it is just the principle of understanding that thoughts create our reality but we have brains we have animal brains we have a reptilian brain very primal brain so our emotions get in the way our egos etc because we are naturally fear-based because we don't have the mental capacity to know what's out there in the universe what we can do with our energy our mind what happens after we pass etc so we naturally have in our mind like just programmed fear so manifesting as magical as it is seems like something to a lot of people that could be woo woo meaning like yeah right it, but that's really because it's hard for us to do it. Technically, we are capable of closing our eyes and manifesting a million dollars. There's a lot of actors and actresses that have done it, right? Um, technically, we have the ability of, of, of the power to do it overnight if we want it to. But why does nobody do Why, why don't you see that happening? Because we're all human and we just don't have the mental capacity 
to control our thoughts and our subconscious beliefs to the point where nothing can interfere between us and our visualization for what we desire. There's always going to be a buffer. There's always going to be something in the middle that's going to make it hard for that energy to just go directly to the finish line. That's why. That's why we can't just close our eyes and say, I want a million dollars and have it just, you know, come to, you know, show up at your doorstep. That's why. But that doesn't mean that manifestation isn't something that we're capable of doing. Our entire reality and existence is manifestation. It's manifestation of our thoughts, our words, what we see, what we think. Think about your whole life. Anything that you just convinced yourself in your head for whatever reason was going to happen has happened. Everything you've convinced in your mind was not going to happen didn't. Seriously. So... The reason that it just doesn't happen like is because the amount of time that it takes for something to manifest really depends on how much you believe in your what you're trying to manifest and how much you believe in that it's possible. How much you believe that there is nothing in between you and that finish line. If you're trying to manifest, for example, and the reason I'm talking about manifestation is because during a full moon, the energy is the strongest to help us push us. It'll catapult us forward. It'll it'll make the process a little quicker for us, but it could also take us backwards if we get into negative thoughts right now. Okay, that's why it's so important. You can want to manifest a relationship right now. And genuinely be visualizing this is the person I want to marry. And you believe it's possible. So technically you've already manifested that. But you also manifested the fact that you don't have the job you want. That you don't live in the city you want to live in. That you're uncomfortable here. That you had to take care of of, um, your health, your family, your children. Whatever the case may be. You need to get a divorce. You name it. So... In between that visualization that you've already created, that manifestation you've already created, you also created a bunch of roadblocks. So how fast you want something to manifest depends on you and how many roadblocks you're going to put in between there. Because you're probably, you you may be putting roadblocks that you don't even see as a problem. You just think it's like the natural flow of things. Well, I, I'm visualizing this manifestation. I want it, but I have to do all these things in the middle. Like once you start adding planning into your manifestations, like extreme planning, you're you're pushing it really far. Manifestation is a combination of visualizing, being 100% certain that you're going to get to that finish line, And also action, taking steps to make it happen. So if you're visualizing and thinking about the uh, the finish line and knowing 100% that it's going to happen, but instead the steps that you're taking are a windy road, like, okay, so I visualize this is going to happen, but I need to do this over here. I have to focus on this job over here. It becomes fragmented. So yeah, you have to take action, but you have to take direct action for that particular goal. Not, I want to manifest a relationship, so let me take care of my finances here, which means now it's a million subgroups. It means I have to do this with this job. I have to apply here. I have to do this. Now let me take care of my family over here, which means I have to have this conversation with my mom. I need to do this. It becomes so fragmented where instead you take action. Yeah, you still have to take care of that stuff, but it's like, I want to manifest. This is just an example. I want to manifest this relationship. You're thinking about the finish line, but the action you're taking is directly towards that first. Like I'm going to pick up the phone and call this person and tell them I want to manifest this with them. Hey, can we make this happen? Let me, what can I do to facilitate this with this person directly? You know, like those kinds of things, steps, right? So what I was talking about, like witchcraft and religion and stuff is, this is the interesting thing, is that manifestation, again, is all about just like having control over your brain in order to make something happen. That's why in church, in religions, you get together to do what? To pray and speak things into existence. 
when you have rosary beads, if you're a Christian, you say the same prayer like a hundred times. Why do you do that? It's because these laws have we know them. It's in the Bible. However you want to call if you want if you want to if it's woo woo to you to call it manifestation, etc. Because of words, that's your choice, but it's the same concept. The reason those things exist is because there's an understanding. The reason rituals exist, like lighting candles in church, etc., is because there's an understanding that you need rituals in order to quiet the mind because we can't do it on our own because we're animals. So by going to church and having the ritual of sitting down, having the ritual of praying and having the ritual of kneeling, which will calm your mind and having the ritual of everyone together saying the same prayer, which forces you to be focused on one thing, having the ritual of saying the same prayer over and over and over and over, having the ritual of getting up and giving gratitude by taking the body of Christ, having the ritual of going and lighting a candle. Do you understand? This is just all of this is a, is a process so that when you're in that hour long mass, when you leave, you have done nothing but keep your mind 100% focused on that goal. I'm not talking about the corruption in church and stuff. I'm talking about what the Bible says to do, which is just, it's a book. It's a book of stories and how to manifest. Okay. And the book of Psalms is, is a book of spells. Okay. Now we're talking about witchcraft and stuff is the same stuff. I'm not talking about people doing spell works for evil and stuff like that. First of all, any, you could do bad, like you could do good. That goes for anything. But you know why witches and stuff exist? It's the same thing because you if, if you can't control things, it's not that they have a power you don't. It's just that they have developed their rituals to be able to control their mind enough to visualize something for you that you can't visualize yourself. So they manifest something for you. And just the belief that you have that they have the power to manifest that for you makes it happen. And that's what spell work is. It's just whatever method that you need to take so that so that your brain can quiet down and focus on an outcome. If you believe in witchcraft and stuff, you're going to go to a witch. You're going to say, I want this. Hopefully something positive because if it's negative, it's always going to bite you in the ass. Don't do that. Okay? It's because in your mind, you can't, you don't know how to manifest it on your own. So this person does the same thing that you would do in church. <laughs> it's a ritual puts you in a state where that's all you're focusing on they already mastered the 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 craft of only focusing on this outcome for you and they put so much energy into it and you believe in them so much that it happens that's all that it is you can do that on your own do you understand that that's all that life is that's why i always like you know i go to church and all and all of that be, but I but I go with a different perspective. I go with the a spiritual. I go with a perspective of like I, I read the Bible so many times and I sleep with it next to my bed. But I know what it says. And um, that that's that that's the law of life, <laughs> and it says it in there so many times. You know the reason that there's I'm not talking about like the evil that are witches and stuff like that because there's evil in everything right there's evil in everything it's what you do with the power that you have as an individual to manifest because we all have it just some people n know how to do it more than others that's all so if you don't know how to manifest, you go to a witch, they help you. If you don't know how to manifest, you go to a church and you're convinced that by being in that environment, you're going to pray and pray and, and it's going to happen. And, and it does. Okay. I felt like sharing that with you because you need to understand the mechanism. Anything that you think about right now, you're going to make happen more than ever. That's so let's go back to the full moon. It has the most energy right so think about the full moon energy as like one of those mediums that i just spoke about like going to a witch or going to pray at an institution or whatever the full moon the energy assists you with that even though you don't see it it's an energetic force that assists you in your manifestation without you seeing it and because that's that's a double-edged sword because 
if you focus on visualizing something that's really good for you and positive, oh, it's going to happen. The moon's here to assist you. But if you decide tonight to stay negative all night long, they're just and they're, your prayers are just going to be answered. That's what's going to happen. If you sit and you sit sit and dwell that this is not going to happen for you, this is not going to happen for you. You're going to notice the effects in a couple of months more than ever that it's not. So now is the time to really think about what makes you happy and what you want. And focus on it. Meditate on it, please. Make it happen. The strongest energy is two days before the full moon, two days after, and seven days after. And it's not just like this day and that's it. Then it starts to manifest over a course of six to eight months. Okay? The full moon has been used for rituals since the beginning of time in every ancient civilization ever. It's in the Bible. It's in everything. Earth is not the only planet and, and existence in space. It's all a collective process. And all of this has been documented since the beginning of time. And again, if the moon can control the tides and the waves of the ocean... It can control you. So it also heightens emotions. Understand that. So try that. That's that's the prob that's the issue of being human, is that because it controls your emotions. It can sway you in a way you don't want it to sway you. So be careful with that. Be careful with that. Be careful with it. Um oh, I didn't even notice this was recording vertically. Hopefully I can fix this. Great. Because usually if it does that, it doesn't pop up on the screen correctly. There is a big emphasis with this full moon about wanting to be your authentic self and finding out what your purpose is. It's like, a, and it's that Capricorn cancer energy. We're in cancer season and it's a Capricorn moon. It's like, um... Finding out what is home. How to make yourself feel like home within yourself. Being authentic. Relationships that feel like home. Wanting to fix things that you know you want. Like people that you love. Like doing the damn thing once and for all. If you're, if you are living with your family or your families are pushing ideologies on you that you don't agree with. This is the time to say I'm not doing this anymore wanting to be your own self if you're at a job that you don't feel like is home there is a push during this full moon to just say I can't take this like and just find your own outlet so think ponder about these things ponder about what makes you feel like home within yourself who makes you feel like home we're not on earth to be alone so if the, once you feel like home within yourself you'll be able to recognize who makes you feel like home too because 9.5 out of 10 times, if you don't feel 100% at home with yourself, you're connecting with someone that doesn't feel like home within themselves too. But that doesn't mean they're not your person. That just means you guys reflect each other perfectly. So 9 out of 10 times, if you become home within yourself, this person will too and you guys can come together. You'll know the difference today. Today, authenticity becomes very clear. Today, it's clear that if you're in a job you're not supposed to be in, if you're living in a place you're not supposed to be in, if there's people outside of you that are influencing you, it's time to take control of your life and visualize it today and do something about it today. All right? I'm going to pull one card. I've been like wanting to play with things on this channel a lot. One card for each sign. As a message for this full moon. But you know. Listen to all of them. Because maybe there's something in it. For all of you. And you might not know your whole chart. Because actually during a full moon. Obviously it's gonna. It's going to manifest itself. With your sun sign. But mostly your rising sign. If you don't know what your rising sign is. Or your moon. Or your Venus. Your Mars. Etc. Just google free natal chart free birth chart it's gonna cafe astrology has it 
you put your birthday at the time you were born, the city, state, or country, and it'll show you. It'll just pop up. But the rising sign usually is a more, it's a combination of the sun and the rising, mostly for full moons. Okay? But hear them all, you know? But it's it, it's just part of the picture, you know? But the rising sign is more what you see on your in the outer world. The moon is what you feel on, like, the inside, inside. The sun, you know, it's all together. Mostly you're rising, okay? But the sun, too. I don't know about you guys, and I don't know why I'm sharing, but in, in tropical astrology, I'm a Libra sun. A lot of people have asked in comments lately. I'm a Libra sun. I'm a Virgo moon. I'm a Sagittarius rising. I'm a Scorpio Venus. And the rest of my chart is a is bombarded by Sagittarius and Scorpio, which I think is a way more accurate represent a repre representation of who I am than just being a Libra. I think the Libra, and that's an example of what I was saying, because Libra is like balanced and calm. And Scorpios are deep and dark and like get to the like melancholy and the dark stuff to like transmute. Uh, Scorpio's death card in tarot is death and transformation. Like we are the, we are death. <laughs> I'm the grim reaper. <laughs> and Sag and Sagis are like wild and outspoken and very spiritual. And it's the only astrological sign with a weapon. <laughs> Right, so that's just an example. I think my Libra sun is there to balance all my chart out. <laughs> so I'm just giving you that example. Well, so you know, if you're not into astrology, so you know that your sun sign is just one part of it. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull one card for every sign. Let's start with the air signs. I'm gonna use the Urban Tarot for this. I've been playing around a lot with different, you know, readings and such. It's fun. It's fun. It is a full moon. And I said, you know, number one, which is interesting, it's a full moon today. It's July 13th. Today marks one full year of when I came to the Dominican Republic, Punta Cana, which is where I live now. Last year at this time, July 13th, I was here, but I didn't know I was going to move yet. I had no record. I had no, no inkling that I was going to stay. Um, but today does mark a year of me being in this country. So that's significant. And also, I added a members page. Join it if you haven't. There's a dailies there, bonus content every day. And um, I decided to add that also for the full moon. Because if I'm going to do anything to create a new future, it's going to be now. It's part of my visualizations. You do. Do, do stuff. It's, do things for you that are authentic to you. Let's start with the air signs. Let's, air signs. Let's start with Gemini. Let's start with Gemini. Oh, gosh. Gemini. First of all, swords. This is a ton of swords. That's a heavy one. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. It says ruin. But swords uh, do represent air signs. So, go figure. The ten of swords ruin means backstabbing. Means ending. Like, feeling depleted. Like, you're done. It says ruin. Okay. The message that I'm getting for Gemini is if you're in this energy, the 10 is the last stop. It's ace to 10, okay? If you're in this energy, do not focus on it right now because you're going to continue to manifest. Whatever happened, happened. Now it's time to... It's time to focus on what you want to change and focus on that today more than what ending happened and how badly you feel because that this is a warning that you're going to continue to manifest this i'm going to keep them quick that's gemini Jeez, way to start but that's what this is for it's to warn you about these things let's do aquarius next air sign that was way too many one that was way too many also just one Aquarius, Aquarius, you get the Prince of Cups, the filmmaker. Princess, Prince of Cups is also the Page of Cups. This is, it could literally be 
an omen if you're trying to start a YouTube channel or a photographer or something, okay? Filmmaker, I mean, start it. Pages are children, you know? So it's like starting small. I mean, you don't see, you don't see that if you start small right now, if you think about that vision, it's going to be really, really, really big. But also, this is a message, filmmaker, to look at things through a different lens. Again, so you can manifest the reality that you want. You might see things as a page right now, which is like, again, from a childlike perspective, like a baby level, like it hasn't manifested yet. But you don't see the end of the film, though. They want you to know that. You're not the universe, but you can create the universe. So stop focusing on the little things that are happening right now and think the big picture so you can manifest what it, what it is that you want. Because what's happening right now, though it seems small, is going to become huge by the end of the year. That's why it's a filmmaker. You are creating. It's time to create a new film starting today, figuratively and literally. Libra. Libra, high priestess, high priestess is a psychic, it's a medium. High priestess is your intuition, intuitive abilities. She also doesn't speak much. She finds her answers from within. In this deck, she's in a bath, she's lighting candles, she's literally doing a full moon ritual here. Libra, keep yourself balanced. You have to detox. There is a need for you to rid yourself of some energy that's cling to you. I'm getting that strongly. Like there's energy from outside people and situations that are clinging to you and are really affecting your aura. And you need to do a cleansing. Light some white candles, pray, meditate, and just relax. If anything triggers you, don't even react today. It's going to pass. Also, don't listen to the advice of other people right now. Get your answers only from within high priestess. That's what that's about. Only you know the answer. There is a big message here about like devil energy outside of you. Like, um, sorry, the devil energy outside of you, like trying to convince you, confuse you about what it is like, you know, to go against what it is that your intuition wants, etc. That's a test. Trust your intuition. That's what's right. Okay, I did the air signs. Let's do earth signs. Let's start with Virgo. It's Virgo death. These are heavy cards, but they're not. And death, we were talking about it. Death means death and transformation. Okay? His ribs are out. This is an autopsy. The heart is out. There is a need for you to really analyze what's in your heart. What's been hardening your heart? Your heart space is not open. There's surgery being performed on this corpse. Okay? To see what's what has affected the heart to the point that it's already killed you. Okay? So whatever it is that's been affecting your heart space has already caused enough damage and destruction in your life. You're dead. But you're actually here on the physical form still. So it's death and transformation. So now you have to reflect on what it is that you need to heal in your heart space so that you can be reborn. If you don't focus on that right now, nothing's going to change. Virgo. That was Virgo. Earth signs. Taurus. I'm getting allergies again. Well, you got a tower that popped out. What's happening with you, Taurus? The Hierophant. The Hierophant is commitment, structure, things being done right, institutions like churches, the institution of marriage. There's somebody on the podium here giving a speech. I'm getting the energy of this of like stand up for yourself and do the right thing. I just posted something about courage, nobility, and responsibility. Without those three things, there's nothing. You have to focus on those three things. You need to have the courage to do what's right and get what you want. You need to have nobility and honor. And you need to take responsibility as well. 
Capricorn. The allergies, I'm so sorry. Capricorn. Eight of Swords, interference. Whoa. The Eight of Swords is a self-imposed imprisonment of your own mind. You don't even know what's controlling your mind, what's interfering with your, with your manifestations, with what you want. You're completely blinded about it. Completely. There's a lot of interference here. Mental interference, emotional interference, outside parties interfering. So many things at once. It's also the energy of like what we were talking about before. What is interfering with you feeling like home within yourself? I'm getting it's like your job is interfering with that feeling. Who you're surrounding yourself is interfering with that. All of that needs to be eliminated. All of it. Big change needs to happen or you're going to be stuck again and again. Fire signs. Start with... Sag, Sagittarius, Princess of Cups, the costume designer. Wow, this is a fun one. That could be a very particular message for you, right? Go for it. If you want to do something creative with your life, start manifesting and visualizing it right now. Do something fun, okay? Okay? This is, this is a very big omen to go after a passion project if you want to. If you start doing it now, it's going to go so well. But it's also an omen, again, to remind you that you have control of your life. Whatever you start creating right now is going to end up being a masterpiece. And even though it seems small right now, it is going to grow. That was sad. Let's do Aries. my gosh aries wheel of fortune <laughs> sudden luck a huge karmic lessons for you are you getting the lesson your life is about to change like you do not even freaking see it now, this card i always say for the wheel of fortunes this card looks like a tower card like it's so dark the gates are closed there's lightning there's a lot of heaviness around your life right now you don't even see that a, a new door is about to open out of freaking nowhere. Big love vibe for you, actually. Okay? And everything. Huge. You're about to hit the jackpot. But not if you don't speak up, I'm getting. Tell someone you love them. Go after your passion project. Do what you are being guided to do. Leo. Wow, okay. I don't know what that was. Well, Leo got the same as Libra. High Priestess. Same as Libra. Psychic, the medium, your intuition. It's the same thing. You need to detach yourself from this heavy energy that's clinging to you because of the outside influences, people, job, etc. There's going to be a lot of interference from other people's perspectives and opinions. Please, you have to tune it out you know the answer and it might go against everyone else it doesn't matter go within cleanse your energy you know what to do who's missing water signs let's start with cancer because it's cancer season i should have done cancer first because it's cancer season sorry i said save the best for what is going on with cancer did you see that save the best for last what is if I could shuffle, that would be fantastic. Like, on. Okay. Cancer, is there something going on that I need to know about? Done. I'm just shuffle again. Because this doesn't happen with anyone else, Cancer. What's going on with Cancer? Okay, well, these are very strong cards. I'm gonna. It's supposed to be one card per per 
sign, but jeez. This seems meant to be. <laughs> the Nine of Swords cruelty. Nine of Swords is being in your mind, anxiety, overthinking. It's also like it's you being cruel with your thoughts, with your words, with your um, logic. Because sw Swords is your mind, your intellect, your thoughts. This is cruelty. Being cruel to yourself, maybe cruel to others. I don't know, right? Something like that. That's about to change, though. See, because there's clarity on that sun card, which is the happiest card in the deck. There is a need for healing here, star cards. This is hope, healing, faith. Six of cups is reconciliation with someone from the past. In this deck, it's called pleasure. You need to go, you need to do things that are... You need to heal something that's causing cruelty in your life right now illuminate something so you can go after your happiness and actually go after what your pleasure is like what's really your pleasure because right now it seems like you're causing cruelty from yourself from not healing and going after what's been illuminated to you is your home Pisces. That was interesting, right? <laughs> Leave it to Cancer, because Cancer's this full moon's actually affecting Cancer the most, if you want that. Pisces. Power dynamics. Four of Pentacles. Pass this power. This is like wanting to keep everything to yourself. You're not opening up. You're not sharing. You're keeping yourself stagnant. And being in dream world. Okay? But nothing is changing in your material world because you're not taking any action. And also, there's a lot of ego here. You got to let that go. Stop thinking about defending yourself. Okay? It's not about power. If you go after things because you want to control them, etc., you're not going to grow to the Ten of Pentacles, which is abundance. You're going to just stay with four. And yeah, they're going to be huge right there, like on display. But they're just freaking four Pentacles, man. Not ten. It's a big stubborn vibe here, which is kind of weird for Pisces, yeah. But it's like an energy of like um. You might be in your thoughts in dreamland a little bit too much, and then controlling things in your actual environment too much, and nothing's budging. You have to take action, and whatever you're thinking, actually do it. Last but not least. Scorpio. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> the Knight of Discs, the Gourmet Chef. The Knight of Discs is the slowest moving night. But I love that night. It's the best night because the other nights can be impulsive, frivolous, etc. But this is like... This night is so slow that when this night gets to the finish line, it's a guaranteed win. And, like, they have a lot. They really appreciate the outcome because they worked for it, you know. And that's why they picked the gourmet chef for this image. Because what does a chef do? Chefs are very meticulous. I always say that. There's a lot behind the scenes that goes into what they do. You get to, you have, you enjoy a delicious dish but there's so much there's preparation there's organization of what needs to be bought how much um it needs to be good quality it needs to be fresh you need to cut it in a certain way prepare it prep it um you need to know how much how long to cook it it's so easy to mess something up right there's so much that goes into it so much so that's, don't get discouraged by how much has to go into it. Just do it. And you're going to create that final product that you have been dreaming of. doesn't matter how, how slow it is. Stop getting discouraged. That's the message. I hope you guys enjoyed this, okay? Love and light.